The big story coming in, U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan and top Chinese diplomat Wang Yi have met in Vienna this week for what both nations claim as candid talks. Right, and this meeting comes as the two powers seek to maintain communications mid soaring tensions, especially over Taiwan. This meeting had aimed to end an unofficial pause in communication after the U.S. shot down a Chinese spy balloon. The balloon allegedly travelled across countries in January and February this year before being shot down. Yes, the top officials met in the Austrian capital for a candid, substantive and constructive discussion. The two held eight hours of talks stretching over Wednesday and Thursday. The meeting further covered discussions over the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the issue of Taiwan. Earlier, Washington has repeatedly warned China against offering any military assistance to Russia. It had also asked China to closely watch its moves over Taiwan, which Beijing claims as its own territory. Now, Taiwan is living under threat of Chinese invasion. Beijing also stepped up military activity around the Taiwan Strait in recent months. The meeting of the top diplomats comes after Chinese Foreign Minister Xin Gang held talks with the U.S. Ambassador to China, Nicholas Burns. The meeting in Beijing was one of the first high-level meetings since Washington shot down the Chinese spy balloon. Now for more on this, Elizabeth Lars, Adjunct Fellow, Pacific Forum and Professor Emeritus of Political Science and International Affairs at the University of Mary Washington is now joining us live. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. My first question to you, now the two sides, they seek to keep channels of communication open here despite soaring tensions, of course, as I mentioned. How do you assess the relationship between the two and in which areas can we expect cooperation and collaboration? Well, at this point, the relationship has nowhere to go but up. Um, I think that the United States and China had reached a very low point uh, after the balloon incident. And um, it is a very good um, outcome that the two sides are now talking because the issues that the United States and China need to um, grapple with are, are substantial. Um, one is the amount of illicit drugs coming into the United States, particularly fentanyl from China. The United States really needs China to help uh, limit uh, if not stop the illegal flow of the drugs, I should say the, the flow of illegal drugs right into the United States. Uh, another area of course of concern is uh, China has yet to condemn or really criticize Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Uh, recently in a UN motion, um, China agreed that uh, Russia essentially was in the wrong in the invasion. Um, but uh, China has not publicly come out and condemned the move and has not um, you know, supported Ukraine at all, of course. Another area of concern, of course, is climate change. Uh, the United States and China years ago had agreed to work together to cooperate on that effort. And, um, and now that they're talking again, perhaps, perhaps we'll see some cooperation there. Uh, Ma'am, you know, diplomacy more often than not keeps personal interests in mind. So uh, I want to ask you, what do you think has spurred these two nations to break the diplomatic ice and talk? And if I may add, on these two issues of fear of weapon supply to Russia and the issue of Taiwan, do you see any meeting ground between the two countries? There needed to be a little time for ruffled feathers to settle down again after the United States, you know, found an alleged spy balloon over the U.S. and Antony Blinken uh, canceled his trip to China and then China got defensive. And then, of course, when uh, President Tsai Ing-wen of Taiwan came to the United States, and met with some high level government that is on, on the um, congressional side, um, met with some high level people in Congress that further ruffled China's feathers. 
And things needed time to calm down a little bit because the both sides recognize, both Beijing and Washington recognize that it is extremely important that the two countries talk because as there still are tensions concerning Taiwan and in the Taiwan Strait and also the South China Sea, there's a greater chance of escalation of, of aggression, uh, but also misunderstandings and miscalculations and, and, and accidents happening that can result in some type of a military confrontation. And so both sides recognize that that needed to be done. Uh, China, of course, is not going to change its views on Taiwan and the United States. Um, you know, Nicholas Burns, um, U.S. ambassador to Beijing, when he um, met um, uh, Qin Gang, of course, in Beijing, uh, clarified that the United States still does have a one China policy, which is different from China's one China principle, where the U.S. acknowledges that it's Beijing's view that Taiwan belongs to the PRC, but we do not agree. We just acknowledge that that's Beijing's view. So Nicholas Burns has indicated that Taiwan yes. has long been you know, an issue in US-China relations, and it will continue to be so because the United States supports Taiwan. All right, Elizabeth Lawrence, thanks very much for joining us with your perspective. You're welcome.